Hi everyone, we're back and the topic for discussion is hypothermia. I've tried to simplify it because I think this is a topic that can be underscored and it doesn't only occur outdoors, it can occur also in the clinical setting. Let's try to simplify it. Regardless of the cause of hypothermia, it is considered to be life-threatening and it is defined as a core temperature of less than 95 degrees and may result in death if left untreated. Symptoms will depend on the degree of hypothermia and the patient may have shivering, cold bluish lips and extremities and slowly lapse into a state of unconsciousness. Let's give, me, so give you some uh, outdoor examples. A patient who has had a traumatic event, lost a lot of blood, is a very good candidate for hypothermia. Just take in the outdoors, sometimes people go hiking, they get lost, also it can happen, uh, frozen out, so outdoors. How about uh, the older person, the elderly, more frail, very fragile, they can become hypothermic. And children are more prone because, you know, they have less body surface area. Then we're going to talk more about hypothermia inside as opposed to outside. And as you can see, this patient has just come out of surgery and is having warming measures. People who have surgical intervention are exposed for a long time. Sometimes if it's major surgery, their bodies are opened up, they've lost body fluids, they get quite cold. They come in to pack you and they've got these warm uh, ovens full of warm blankets ready for them. Or they might even have what's called a bear hugger where you just warm them up through that warm air that's blown in from the machine. Regardless of the cause of the hypothermia, whether indoors or outdoors, it's necessary to take fast action if you're going to have that patient survive. So the patient has to be moved. These are some helpful pointers. If it's a patient who's outside and wet to a safe place, you call 911, get some help if you should that be in posi that position, and you remove any wet clothing because that doesn't help, and change it into nice, warm, dry ones. And some helpful pointers about ma do not massage the feet. It's not the right time or apply, if when heat is applied, it should be done very gradually and gently. And of course, I don't have to tell you about transfer to an emergency facility. Again, I brought up the patient in PACU. There is more to it than that. In the post-anesthesia phase, when a patient is being monitored, a patient who has had surgery has got some other definitive problems. Let's take, for example, um, a systole, which is a very lethal cardiac rhythm, complete standstill of the heart can occur. And of course, you know, ACLS, their protocols set by American Heart to follow. Uh, some of the dangerous rhythms you could experience could also include like ventricular fibrillation. A cardiac tamponade can cause a hypothermia also. Drowning. Um, a patient who has a cardiac history is also typically what happens before surgery. They do a 12-lead EKG. Hypothermia increases the body's need for oxygen, and a lethal cardiac rhythm such as a systole may result. A patient who has a previous cardiac history is at very great risk. All the more reason why when patients come into the surgical, from the surgical suite into PACU, we generally give them oxygen to lessen the demands, and of course their bodies are cold. We take great stroke, like in an instant when they come in, we go to the oven and get those warm blankets and throw over them because some of them come out really chilling. And if you were to be able to read an EKG and took a look at the rhythm, you can even see how the rhythm, how shaky it looks because they're so um, hypothermic until their bodies warm up. And of course, we always check their vital signs to make sure that everything's okay. Um, I wanted to give you a very sweet example to end. And has it ever occurred to you that some of us who do not have to work very hard to keep our body temperatures regulated, look at these seals. They are very well protected from hypothermia. They're in some nice icy water, but let's look at them. They seem very happy. So they have natural protection from hypothermia. Have a good week. I hope you've learned something from this.